Greetings, everyone. Today we're going to explore graphing quadratics in vertex and intercept form. All right, so so far we've graphed in standard form in the previous lesson, so make sure if you need help with that that you rewatch the previous video. Um, we based that on using the vertex shortcut of negative b over 2a and then finding the key features from there. So another form that we're going to explore is vertex form. So remember those absolute value shifts? They still apply, meaning if this meant right, or excuse me, up to, then this also means up to. So we still use those same shifts in the same way. Properties of vertex form. Sorry, the writing's off a little bit here. But in the end, here's what matters. The H is always your horizontal shift. The K is always your vertical shift. So in the end, that H and K are your vertex. Okay? So I can know what my vertex is just by looking at the problem, just like we do with absolute value. Let's take a look at an example to apply. So in this particular example, I can see my shifts and I'm going to write those out. So I'm going to read my function left to right. So first of all, I have a vertical compression of one half. Okay, we've got a number out front, which means compression is going to widen my U shape. And then I'm going to end up going right three, and I'm going to go down five. Okay. Let's see these applied in a table. So for example, if I create a parent table, you do want to do this off to the side. The parent table for y equals x squared. If I pick some key values, negative 2 squared is 4, one, negative 1 squared is 1, 0, 1, 4. Parent table. And I want to apply these in order. So let's start off with the half. Half is a vertical compression, it's being multiplied, so I want to do what it literally says, times the vertical or y values by a half. Next in line is the minus 3. We know that means right 3, so that applies to the x's, and to make it go right, we're going to add 3 to the x values. And then down 5 is y values, so I'm going to subtract 5 from the y values. Okay. This creates our new table, our new function. So if I actually calculate these out, okay, if you need some time to do that on your own, make sure to pause. So we have a negative 3 here. We have a negative 4.5, I believe. Let's see, a half. Yep. We have a negative 5, and then we're repeating ourselves. So if I am to graph that, negative, or excuse me, 3, negative 5 is my vertex. Look at that, 3, negative 5. That's my vertex. That makes sense, just like for absolute values. Okay, so then from there, I can see, I can't count rise 1, run 2. We have a curve. It doesn't make sense anymore. So that's why I needed this little table here. So at 1, negative 3. And at 5, negative 3, I can see that my u is widened out a little bit. And I can see that graph a little clearer. Concavity is up, so that's nothing new. Axis of symmetry, we're talking about where could I fold my u onto itself. So I've got x equals 3. The end behavior, this is a little bit new, so this might take some time. We're looking for as x goes to the right and as x goes to the left. What is the y value? What are the y values doing? As x goes to the right to infinity, my y values are going up to infinity. As the y values, excuse me, the x values go left, the y values are still going up because it's a parabola. The y intercept and x intercept, I do expect to see some work here, meaning y intercept, if I want the y value, I plug 0 in for x. If I want the x intercept, that means I plug 0 in for y. So we're just doing straight up calculations. I want to find my y, so I'm plugging 0 in for x. And calculate that out. We end up with negative half. 
So I would write it as a point. Zero comma negative half is my y-intercept. And take a look at your graph. Does that make sense with what we've already graphed? Here, I'm going to set y equal to zero. And this gives us purpose for why we spent time solving by square roots. I need to isolate the squared. So I'm going to add 5 over. I'm going to times both sides by 2. Then I can square root. Then I can add 3 over. Okay, But I want to write it as a point, just as I did for y-intercepts. So we're going to say 3 plus or minus wrap. 10 comma 0. You could write it as two separate points too. Um, that's personal preference. Continuous, yes, all parabolas. They're basic. Parabolas are continuous boundedness. Because it was an upwards U, it had a boundary here. So it's bounded below. Okay, bounded below. Domain and range. I love domain and range because it's always negative infinity to infinity for parabolas. Range though, the lowest it goes um, was 5 included all the way to infinity. And intervals of decreasing and increasing. As I trace my finger left to right, I'm decreasing from the x value of negative infinity to the x value of 3. And then I am increasing from that same x value of 3 to infinity. That's all old news from previous lessons. So key thing here that we got to watch out for, this, okay? Solving for x-intercepts is what makes this different than everything else, and it's the reason why we spent time solving and factoring. So if you would rather, if you like that vertex form, instead of standard form, you could transform it. That's why we spent time completing the square. So if I want to complete the square, let's just take a look at how this works out. I'm going to move that constant to the other side. Okay, I need to take my middle value of negative 2. I'm going to divide by 2 and square it. So I get 1. So I need to add 1 to both sides. All right, so let's simplify that. I've got y plus 3 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. That factors, right? That's the whole purpose of completing the square. I now have x minus 1, x minus 1. I should get the same thing twice. If I don't, I'm doing something wrong because I need the same thing twice, okay? And then let's kick that 3 back over to the other side because I want it to look like a graph, a typical graphing function. So here I can see my vertex is at 1, negative 3, just from completing the square. So there's, now there's purpose behind why we went through that process. All right, let's also explore intercept form today. So this makes a lot of content for one video, so I do recommend re-watching it to separate these two ideas. So when we're looking at intercept form, our intercepts are identified by this p and q value, meaning those two values are where we cross the x-axis. Therefore, I'm just going to draw a quick little sketch to show you what I mean. If I cross at, let's say, negative 1 and I cross at 4, the vertex or axis of symmetry is always in the middle. So I can find an average or the halfway point to find my vertex. So I'll know intercept, intercept, vertex pretty quickly. So let's apply this to an example, try to make more sense of it. All right. If I take a look at this, I know my intercepts, because this says plus 3, my intercept is going to be negative 3, 0. Why? Because, you guys, if I set this equal to 0 and I subtract 3 from both sides, that's how I found it. Okay? So I don't need to show that little work every time. Just think it's the opposite sign. So my other intercept is going to be 1, 0. If I actually graph that 1, 0, and I'm going to put that in my table here, and I'm going to plot negative 3, 0 here, and I'm going to leave some space, negative 3, 0. That means, you guys, my vertex is halfway in the middle. So you could count, you could find the average algebraically, but I can just count and say, hey, negative 1's in the middle. I don't know what its y value is, though. I do a little bit of work. So what's negative 1 plus 3 and negative 1 minus 1? 
I get a 2, I get a negative 2, I get a negative 4. So I'm just plugging it in to see what the y value is. But negative 1, negative 4, that makes sense. An upward u is positive. It's not skinny or wide. That makes sense because I don't have a leading coefficient of other than 1. You guys, you don't even need the rest of the table. That's all I need for this graph. There's my u. Sorry, it should look like a better u. I have a little hard time on this tablet. So key things, concavity up, that's easy. Vertex, we just figured it out, negative one, negative four. Axis of symmetry is gonna be in the middle or your X value of your vertex. End behavior, end behavior. As X is going to the right, the Y is going up. As the X value is going to the left, the Y value is still going up. Your Y intercept. Again, remember, if I want to know my y, I plug 0 in for x. If I want to know my x, I plug 0 in for y. Let's plug in x for 0, or 0 for x. That makes it pretty straightforward. We've got a 3, we've got a negative 1, we've got a negative 3. There's my point, 0, comma, negative 3. Alright, if I want to set y equal to 0, Oh, wait a second, we already did that. We already know our intercepts, so let's just write them out. We don't need to show the work again. It's still negative three, zero, and one, zero. Continuous boundedness, yes, continuous. Boundedness, where it's bounded below, okay? Because it was an upwards parabola. Domain, love domain, negative infinity to infinity range on this case, okay, be careful. Negative four is the lowest. It goes up to infinity, included negative four. Increasing, decreasing, as I trace left to right, I am decreasing from the x value of negative infinity to the x value of negative one. And then from that value of negative one, I'm increasing to the x value of infinity. Okay, if you would rather graph using intercept form than standard form, you can still do that. Again, purpose behind us spending time factoring is so we could do this. All you have to do is take your standard form and factor it. So let's start off with this one. I'm going to take out a common factor of 3. Uh, it gets me to 24, I believe. Um, and then that actually factors pretty nice there. X and X. 6 and 4, plus and minus. If you need to pause the video, please do so to understand that factoring. And boom, there's my intercept form. Okay, just by looking at this, I know my intercepts are going to be 4, 0 and negative 6, 0, which means I know my vertex is going to be at negative 1 and I'd have to calculate the y value. Look how quick that becomes. So again, so far, we've learned standard form. Rewatch that video if you need to. But now we also have vertex form and we have intercept form. Okay, so you guys, I know I zoomed through this pretty quickly. Rewatch it, okay? Take your time, try those examples on your own, but we need to be well versed in all three forms. You need to be comfortable with factoring, you need to be comfortable with completing the square, need to be comfortable with the properties of a function. If you have questions, let me know. But until next time, have a good one.